Do you want to learn how to install Ubuntu Server 17.4? I will take you through the installation process step by step in this tutorial video. To learn how, don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Patrick from Dutchie Tech Tips. If you want more tutorial videos like this, hit the subscribe button. If you are already subscribed, hit the bell icon to receive notifications on future videos. Before we begin installing Ubuntu Server 17.4, we first need to insert the installation media. In this case, I am using an ISO file attached to VirtualBox. First, you need to insert your installation media and restart your computer, which I will be doing now. Once the computer has restarted, you will be brought to this screen to select a language for the installation of Ubuntu Server. We're going to select English by pressing the Enter key. Now we have a number of options we can do to install Ubuntu Server, but we're going to be using the first option called Install Ubuntu Server. So we're going to press Enter on our keyboard. Now it's asking us to select a language we'll be using for the installation process. The selection before is for the menu option. So we're going to select English by pressing Enter. Now it's asking us to select your location. Because we are here in New Zealand, we're going to select New Zealand. But if you're in another country, select the country that's applicable to you. Once you have done that, press Enter. It will ask you if you want to have your keyboard layout detected. But in this case, I'm going to select No. Because we selected No, it's going to ask us what option keyboard we want to use. So we're going to stick with English US. So we're going to press Enter. Now it's asking the same thing again. So we're going to press Enter again. This process may take some time as it's loading components that's crucial to the installation of Ubuntu Server. Now it's asking us to enter a host name, or a computer name, if you will, for the server. We're going to call it UBS1. Once you're happy with the host name, press Enter to continue. Now it's asking us to set up users and passwords. A user account will be created for you to use instead of the root account for non-administrative activities. Now it's asking us to give us the full name of the new user. So we're going to call it Systems Administrator. Once you have done that, press Continue. Now it's asking us to create the username. Just remember, in Linux, usernames must be in lower case. So we're going to call this SysAd. Once you have done that, press Enter. Now it's asking us to input a new password. So I'm going to put the new password in now. Once you have done that, press Enter to continue. Now it's asking us to verify our password. So type in the password that you have typed on the previous screen. Once you have done that, press Enter to continue. Now it's asking you if you want to configure your home directory for encryption. But this is a user preference. But in this case, we're going to select No and press Enter. Now it's asking us to configure the clock for the server. So our time zone here in New Zealand is Auckland. So we're going to press Enter. The next part of the installation is setting up our partitions. What we need to do is select Guided, Use Entire Disk and set up LVM. So we're going to press Enter to continue. Now it's asking us to select a disk that we want to partition. So we only have one drive on this server. So we're going to press Enter to continue. This is a warning message telling you that the disk you selected will be formatted and configured with LVM. So we're going to select Yes and press Enter to continue. Now it's asking us to select the size for our new partition. So we're going to leave it as our default using the whole entire drive. So press Enter to continue. This is a final warning message advising you what changes are going to be made to your disk. So are you sure you want to write these changes to disk? If so, select Yes and press Enter.
This process may take some time as it's gathering particular components for the installation of Ubuntu server. Now it's asking us to type in the HTTP proxy information to allow the server to access the outside world. But we don't have a proxy server, so we're going to press Enter to continue. This process may take a while as it's trying to gather all the packages that's on the bootable media to be presented to us to select what we want to install on our Ubuntu server. Now it's asking us if we want to set up automatic updates. This is a user preference, but in this case, I'm going to select no automatic updates and I'm going to press enter to continue. Now it's asking us what software we want to install on this server. I highly recommend that you install OpenSSH Server if you're required to remote into the server. Otherwise, without this, you will not be able to access the server. So I'm going to select this. What I'm going to select next is the DNS server, which I would recommend. Next, I'm going to select Samba File Server, but that's just a user preference. So I'm going to select that by pressing spacebar and I have made my final selections and I'm going to press enter to continue. Now the installation process is starting to install the Ubuntu server and the packages that we need for the applications we selected in the previous menu. This may take some time. Now it's asking us to install the Grub bootloader onto our hard disk. So we want to select yes and press enter to continue. Now the installation has been completed successfully. Now it's asking us that we need to remove our installation media from the computer before we can restart the system. So I'm going to remove that now. Once you have removed your installation media, press enter to continue. As you can see that the installation of Ubuntu server has been installed successfully and now is waiting for us to log in with the credentials that we created earlier in the installation process. To summarize the key points of this video, I've shown you how easy it is to install Ubuntu server 17.4 onto your computer, create a user account so we can log in, and select the applications that we need to be installed on our Ubuntu server.